welcome to this video where we are going to be testing out the Dark Shard and Dark Sliver of Lang. These swords are brand new tier 95 dual wield melee weapons that have come into the game just this week with the release of the Arch Glacier. These weapons go by many names, Lang Swords, Ice Kopeshes, or even Cold Cuts. But more importantly than what we call these things, let's figure out if they're actually worth it. We're going to start off by talking about exactly how good these things are on paper and exactly what they do. We'll be looking at the set bonus as well as the special attack. After that, I'm going to beat up a number of bosses and then at the end of the video, I will give you my final verdict on if the Lang Swords are worth it. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. For the duration of this video, the weapons are augmented with Precise 6 Aftershock 1 as well as Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2 on the offhand. These perks are completely best in slot. Prices will undoubtedly change, but I made the offhand myself and I purchased the main hand for just over max cash, a total price of 2.25 billion coins. Like I said earlier, the Lang Swords have a set bonus, and we're going to talk about it right now. The set bonus makes the Hurricane and Destroy abilities no longer share a cooldown. In addition to this, it also allows you to use the Hurricane ability with the Lang Swords equipped, so you can now use Hurricane with dual wields despite it generally only being a two-handed ability. This is an absolutely massive DPS increase, as in a Berserk, Hurricane and Destroy would be the second and third strongest abilities you could use, but in the past, you'd have to choose between which one you wanted to use. As soon as you use Destroy, it would put both itself as well as Hurricane on cooldown and vice versa. With these new swords, that is no longer the case, and in your Berserk rotation and even outside of it, every 20 seconds, you'll be able to use both Hurricane and Destroy. This is just an example Berserk rotation with the Leng Swords without using Limitless or anything like that. You'll see I'm able to use Greater Barge and then Bleed and Assault and then immediately go into a full destroy. That's fairly normal, but as soon as I reach 50% again, I'm going to go into a Hurricane and I will still have time at the end of my Berserk for a little bit of Greater Flurry. In addition to the set bonus, the main hand Leng Sword also has a special attack called Icy Tempest. It costs 20% adrenaline and has a cooldown of 60 seconds. When used, it will increase your damage cap by 30% for 30 seconds. This means your new damage cap for non-crits will be 13,000, and for regular critical strikes, it'll be 15,600. With Smoke Cloud, that goes up to 16,368, and with a Grimoire, it'll go all the way up to 19,500. If you're using Aerithor's Grimoire as well as a Smoke Cloud spell at the same time, you'll have a new crit cap of 20,436. This special attack is locked to your main hand, which means if you were to equip something like a 2H or unequip the main hand for whatever reason, you would immediately lose your special attack buff. So once used, you're best to keep the main hand Lang Sword equipped. Now, this seems extremely powerful until we look at the actual numbers. We want to really put ourselves in a position to succeed here with the special attack, and the more DPS increases we have, the more likely it is to be useful. So in this example, we're going to be using the Berserker Aura, the Darox Relic, Vulnerability, Smoke Cloud, the Tier 99 Melee Prayer, a Ripper Demon, an Elder Overload, the Reaver's Ring, and a Grimoire. I've displayed five commonly used abilities on screen. It's worth noting that the final ability, which is backhand, is assumed to be used with flanking four. And now we're going to take a look at how much extra damage we're going to get by being in the Lang Sword special attack. For starters, just with the special attack itself, no ZGS spec or Berserk, here we go. Oh, oh. Not only is that not good at all, that's actually, that doesn't do anything. Just wastes 20% adrenaline and means I can't switch weapons. But hey, we've got the ZGS though. Let's take a look at that and see how good it is inside the Zara's Godsword special. Oh no. Yeah, that ain't great. Okay, well, at least you've got the Berserk. And as you can see, inside of a Berserk, the majority of our strongest abilities are barely boosted at all. So in a standard boss fight with that standard set of boosts, this thing is not worth the adrenaline. It just isn't. Because Aerithor's Grimoire already increases our crit cap past the point that we can reach with all of these boosts, an additional 30% on top of that is completely useless. And because in certain regards they both do the same thing, if you were to remove Aerithor's Grimoire from the equation, you'll notice that the Lang Sword special attack will perform ever so slightly better, although in my opinion, still not enough to make it worth using. Now, I've said a few times that in a standard boss fight with those standard boosts, things aren't great for the Lang Sword special attack. But there are a number of boss fights in RuneScape where your damage output is boosted artificially. And among the most extreme of those examples is the Terracut boss fight. 
At Terracit, you can use all of the above boosts, but you can also use the Undead Slayer perk, Sigil, and the Salve Amulet E to massively increase your damage output. While we're at it, let's throw on the Dragon Battle Axe special attack as well before the fight. And as soon as you do this, you'll actually have the damage to be able to hit above these hit caps, and that will immediately make the special attack exceptionally useful. Take a look at the values in the Terracit boss fight with all of the above boosts. All of a sudden, the Langsword special attack is extremely useful, and although it is an extreme example, this helps us develop a trend. At a standard boss fight where you will not have any artificial damage boosts, I would consider the special attack not worth using. But at any boss fight where your damage is boosted artificially, something like Phase 4 Raksha, or the Magister, or Terracit, or Karapak on a Slayer assignment, this special attack will immediately become significantly more useful, and it will bring it up to the point of being worth using. I'm going to wrap up this section of the video by saying a quick thank you to the PVM Encyclopedia and specifically GameDolph. He helped me out an absolute ton with all of the math, and I just want to say it was super kind of him to do so. If you are not a member of the PVM Encyclopedia, it is by far the best resource in the game for learning about bossing. If you want to join, there's a link in the description down below. If you've made it this far, congratulations. We are past the math part of the video, and it's time to take the Langswords through a variety of different bosses. We're going to beat them up, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts. The first place I wanted to go with the Lang Swords was Raksha, and I'll be the first to say I am not very experienced at melee Raksha and I made a bunch of mistakes, but regardless of some potential issues in my rotation and not a ton of experience, I was able to get a mechanic skip on phase 1 very easily. But the thing that is a lot more interesting is the Lang Sword special attack on the final phase, because it is so much fun. It felt like for a lot of my abilities, my minimum hit was a 13k, and when it crit, it was almost certain to be over 20,000 damage, and it was just a really cool experience. Does this make melee Raksha faster than ranged Raksha? Undoubtedly no, but it was an absolute ton of fun, and if you do like meleeing this boss, this is one of the places where the Leng Swords will absolutely shine and be more than worth their value. I will also briefly touch on hit chance. I found I did not have to debuff the boss at all, and I had 100% hit chance the entire time. Normally, in this kind of video, we go through all of the Elite Dungeons in order, and we will be going to all of the Elite Dungeons, but I want to mix things up and start things off with ED3. I have a feeling it's going to be absolutely incredible. On our way to the Crassian, we were briefly interrupted by Bossy McBoss Face, and by briefly, well, I mean very briefly. Today was definitely not his best day. Moving on to the Crassian, the Crassian is the only boss or monster in Elite Dungeon 3 that it's very easy to splash on. For whatever reason, he has incredibly high defense, and I noticed the tier 95 accuracy almost immediately. No splashes were found, and I was able to cruise my way to a nice easy one cycle, which is always a good sign. Overall, unspectacular, but it was a pleasant experience that I would absolutely do again. And if you're going to melee ED3, the hit chance is going to be noticeable here. Terracit is, I think, the boss I had the most fun with. I did phase 1 after phase 1 after phase 1, and I just wanted to keep seeing how quickly I could phase it to 200,000 life points. The ability to hit 20k's and 13k non-crits was so incredibly cool, and like we touched on earlier in the video, this is one of the bosses where you have enough stackable boosts that you can actually take full advantage of the Langsword special attack, and we absolutely did so. This is a kill where I forgot to use stat boosting prayer entirely, and we're still able to do 200,000 damage in 20 seconds. The amount of stacked boosts here just make this a really fun experience, and once again, if you're doing melee ED3, I cannot recommend the Langswords enough specifically for the Terracit boss fight. It's just a ton of fun. It is worth noting that melee is not the easiest way to do Terracit, and if you are going for speeds across any combat style, the fastest kills attainable are still done with magic and the fractured staff of Armadol, but if melee is your go-to combat style for ED3, the Lang Swords will shine at Terracit. When we turn our attention to the Ambassador, this kill felt very similar to what I'd be able to do with a Pterosaur Maul. This is because the Pterosaur Maul ends up being right around tier 96 or tier 97, and the Langswords clock in at tier 95. So it's exceptionally similar, the main difference being that with the Langswords, I'm able to use Hurricane as well as Destroy, which is a definite and noticeable advantage compared to my other melee kills, and it did help the kill time just a little bit. At the same time, my exit points or my phase timings weren't significantly different from a standard kill I would do, and I would say if you have these things, they will absolutely do well here, and they will dominate, but it didn't feel like a complete game changer to me. 
After Elite Dungeon 3, I went to Telos, and the first thing I'm going to mention here is that the hit chance is absolutely noticeable. Being up on tier 95 meant that there were points that the boss was not debuffed at all, and I was still able to hit fairly accurately, which is quite nice, especially considering I'm using the Reaver's Ring, which decreases my chance to hit just for having it on. The thing I wanted to play around with most at Telos was messing around with the Red Beam and the Langsword Special Attack on Phase 5. And what I did in the clip you're watching right now is I was able to Langsword Special right at the end of Phase 4, and I'm going to go into Phase 5 with a full Zerk rotation. What you're going to witness is absolute domination, and you can absolutely melt Phase 5 Telos with this setup. I am not an expert in melee Telos, but even at high enrages, the Langswords would still be best in slot, and they would be a noticeable improvement over Dragors or Kopeshes if that's your thing. Heading into Elite Dungeon 2, we're going to get some pretty good mileage out of the Langswords. This is because not only do I have my Stadius Pants with the Dragon Slayer perk on them, but I also have access to the Dragon Slayer Sigil or Ability. Combining those two together should result in some pretty crazy damage, and especially at Astalarn, where you're even further boosted by standing in the White Hole, we absolutely melted the thing. Normally in a video like this, I try to just focus on boss fights, but the mobs in the second elite dungeon, especially the celestial dragons and gemstone dragons, have fairly high melee defense, and this is one of the places where the tier 95 accuracy will actually come in handy and make the mob clears on the dungeon feel a little bit smoother than they otherwise would. Ignore the poor frame rate on this one. ED2 is optimized about as well as a flipbook. Veraklith was more of the same. We were able to get ourselves a 1 minute 47 kill, which is pretty solid considering I'm not on a Slayer task. It's not quite as fast as my best, but that's still a very decent kill time. Veraklith is a boss where you get a lot of free DPS time between the mechanics, and I feel like I was really able to take good advantage of using Destroy and Hurricane every 20 seconds throughout this boss fight. The first thing I'll mention at the Blackstone Dragon is I did not splash a single time on the Black Hands, which is quite handy. But more importantly than that, let's take a look at my damage output as soon as the boss becomes attackable and you head into phase 2. Generally speaking, a sign of good damage output in a solo is if you can get the boss to immediately phase at the end of the very first spiral. And as you can see here, I was able to get that done no problem at all. And I'm not even on a Slayer task, so if I'd been on one, I would have even managed to get a nice little pre-phase in too. I was able to get a final kill time of just under 4 minutes, which is pretty serviceable, and I felt like these weapons performed fairly well. After wiping out the Sanctum Guardian in a minute flat, and then beating up Masuda in just over 3 minutes, it was time for the Langsword's first real test. It's time to one cycle Seryu. This is the technique where you phase the boss a singular time, and as soon as you're able to climb up on top of Seryu's back, you wipe out all 3 crystals in one sitting, immediately completing the boss fight. The first challenge is wiping out the first two crystals before the heal, and we were able to do that with ease. But then the second and by far most difficult aspect of a one cycle serial kill is managing to clear an entire crystal in the very short amount of time you have before you get yeeted back downstairs. We took full advantage of our cold cuts, going from a hurricane immediately into a destroy, and we were able to secure the one cycle. If you're going to be meleeing ED1, these things are absolutely worth bringing with you. Next up on the chopping block, let's talk about Ice Tellos. I'm going to first off say that I don't think melee is the best combat style for this boss, and the reasoning behind that is that the majority of the mechanics will interrupt your berserk, and when you're meleeing in particular, a lot of your damage output is reliant on that 20 second burst. I felt like half the time I zerked, the boss was like, here, have a hug, or here, deal with some minions, and I definitely had a bit of difficulty when compared to the other combat styles. That being said, the Langswords in the end won out, and I was able to complete a number of 500% kills, the fastest of which was 2 minutes and 42 seconds, which is fairly serviceable, although it is a little bit slower than what I'd be able to get with the other combat styles. Next on the chopping block, let's go to God Wars 2. And just to make things a little more interesting, let's set up some speed kills instead of just doing regular standard kills. I just think they're a little more interesting on a boss that doesn't do a whole lot mechanically and only has a couple hundred thousand life points. While we're here, as I am a man of science, why don't we play around with the Langsword special attack and how it increases your hit cap. It's not terribly useful in most standard boss fights, but there are a couple essence of finality weapons that are now viable because you can actually get those crazy high hits. The first one I'm going to show off is the Armola God Sword. It takes 50% adrenaline, but it does so much damage that if you roll a crit, it will actually hit the theoretical max hit of just over 20,000 damage. This isn't actually worth the adren, but it was a ton of fun. We also played around with the Dragon Halberd, the Dragon Dagger, the Vesta's Longsword, and the Dragon Mace, and they were all quite fun to play around with, although in an actual boss fight, if you were going for like damage per minute, probably not the most effective to use. 
On the fun per hour front though, absolutely incredible. And it's so cool busting out all these crazy special attacks and seeing 15,000 plus damage. The fastest kill I was able to get while I was just messing around was 19 seconds and the average kill time was right around 22, which is fairly solid and I really had an enjoyable time. The other fun thing I tried to do to fully take advantage of the Langsword special attack is to not do any damage to the Twin Furies for the entire duration of the fight until they stop attacking and stand in the middle of the room. While that bomb is charging up, the Twin Furies take increased damage, so I thought I'd try and blitz the entire kill just in that short span, having done no damage prior. And as you can see, it actually worked. Would this be viable for literally anything? Absolutely not, but I had a lot of fun doing it and sometimes that's really important too. Of all of the Essence of Finality weapons I tried out, there was one that I thought may actually be useful at another boss, and that was the Dragon Dagger, specifically at the Magister. At the Magister with max corruption, you're already dealing 25% increased damage, and I thought that might be enough damage to get the Dragon Dagger up to hitting over 10,000 with each hit. It hits a total of two times, so that would be 20,000 damage for 25% adrenaline or more. And as you can see, my suspicion was confirmed very quickly as we cruised to an 18 second Magister kill, which is extremely fast. If you are planning on meleeing the Magister, which I wouldn't highly recommend, this is absolutely a viable way to go about it. And the Langsword special attack will actually be quite useful here. The next place I went was Araxor, and this isn't a boss I fight too often these days, but when I go, melee is my preferred combat style to bring here. Coming out of Light Path, it is extremely helpful to have access to Assault, Destroy, and Hurricane, and in those three thresholds, I was able to clear the entire phase, which meant that I did 100,000 damage in my ZGS spec. It's a situation where the Lang Swords are noticeably better than any other melee option, and you'll see on phase 4 I was able to take advantage of the exact same thing, going through a Berserk Rotation, leading with an Assault, and then going through both a Hurricane and a Destroy as well. My final kill time down Light Path was 3 minutes and 1 second, which is quite serviceable, and honestly this was a pleasant experience. I had no issues with hit chance or anything else, and I would absolutely do this again. In the context of a full raid, doing Beastmaster with melee is simply not a super advisable thing. You just take so much more damage than any other combat style, and it's not something I would personally recommend. For Yakamaru, melee will work out decently well, although basing with melee can be a little bit spooky at times. Still, if raids are your thing, especially if you're on a team where the boss isn't frequently debuffed, being on tier 95 accuracy can be quite helpful, and I'd be lying if I said I noticed the damage difference, things absolutely worked out, and if melee is your preferred way to do raids, these things are worth copying. Hard Mode Karapek is one of the bosses where the Lang Swords can absolutely shine. It's not so much use of the special attack as I was not on a Slayer assignment, but the ability to use Assault, Destroy, and Hurricane in Berserk makes a massive difference, especially when you're taking advantage of the Warp Time ability. Warp Time allows you to use Berserk every 30 seconds, and it also allows your Berserk rotation to be something like Assault, Destroy, and then Assault, Destroy, Hurricane. Getting five strong thresholds in one singular 20 second Berserk, and the end result is a ton of damage dealt. All of my kills were under 6 minutes, and it felt like the Lang Swords performed extremely well in this boss fight. And once again, the set bonus really came in clutch to allow me to deal significantly more damage than I otherwise would have been able to. If you've got the budget for it and you do plan on melee and care pack, these things will be an absolute game changer. The final boss we're going to be talking about with the Lang Swords is Solak, and this is the boss I am by far the most familiar with. I do Solak literally every single day and I have for months, so this is a boss I was certainly able to pick up the little things on. I've done a lot of melee, ranged, and mage camping, as well as hybriding in every possible configuration, and the first thing I'm going to say is that if you are going to be melee camping at Solak, the Lang Swords are noticeably better than any other option. If you're into one cycle cores, the one you just watched was one where my duo partner did not berserk at all, they just used the Zaros Godsword special and my berserk was enough to carry it to the end zone. The same goes with root skips. If you're a little bit of damage off getting your first root skips, the Lang Swords will quite likely be able to push you over the edge and make it happen. As for No Realms, it's sort of the same deal. These things are strong. And if you like to melee at Solak, they're going to be an absolutely fantastic pickup. I will add though, despite the Lang Swords being quite powerful, I still have better kills both range camping and mage camping, and after making this video, I'm likely going to go back to using those styles over melee. Part of it is specific personal preferences with the boss fight itself, but also part of it just comes down to raw damage. I feel like I can output more with the other styles and more easily too. Now let's get into my final thoughts. I know a lot of people were fairly underwhelmed with the Lang Swords, and I completely get it. As a result of recent power creep, endgame players are having an easier time outputting crazy amounts of damage with both magic and range over melee. 
Melee has decent burst for 5 or 10 seconds, but for sustained damage output, it simply is not strong enough to keep up with the other styles. As a final conclusion, if you enjoy Melee and you're going to use Melee in places, these things are absolutely worth the price. They're fantastic and they will greatly increase your damage output. One other thing I'm going to mention about the special attack is it's possible that Jagex has a very long-term approach with it, because it's effectively power creep proof. Let's say in two years time, there's a ton of power creep and all of a sudden all three combat styles are dealing 30% more damage than they did before. If you were using ranged or magic, you'd keep running into issues with hitting the hit cap, and with melee, the Langsword special attack would all of a sudden be extremely powerful and almost vital for almost all rotations. It's very possible there's a future update coming out that's going to give melee the ability to hit even harder than it can right now, and if that ever happens, these things will immediately be significantly more powerful. As of right now though, I'm really glad I've got the Lang Swords. I'm absolutely going to hold on to them, and I will be using them anytime I am meleeing. I think they look really cool, and I think they're worth the money. But at the same time, if you were expecting something to break the game the way the Fractured Staff of Armadale did, these weapons are not it.